I'm going in. I'm completely whacked. Don't tell your mother. Can you make sure he gets the proper rub down? Yes. He did well. Yes, my lady. Who are you? Lisa Bevan. Don't you know me, Lady Mary, because I know you? No, I do not know you. And I suppose you've forgotten the Grand Hotel in Liverpool too, my lady. And the night you spent there with Viscount Gillingham, I was a chambermaid. I just suppose we're invisible to people like you. This is all nonsense. You've no proof. Don't be silly. You don't know what I've got. To start with, I've got a page from the register. Then you are a thief. Yes, I am a thief. And I want a thousand pounds to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> That's ridiculous. We'll see how ridiculous it is. I'm going now, but I'll be back. Don't bother. You're not the first person who's tried to blackmail me. Well, I'm glad you know how it works. And as I say, I will be back. Yes? I'm sorry to bother you, my lady, but the dowager has sent a message for you. Apparently, it's urgent. I doubt it. I haven't got it, my lady. She sent a maid to put it into your hand. How mysterious. Well, where is this Mercury maid? Here, my lady. Thank you, Mrs. Hughes. We mustn't delay you. Can you send Anna up? Of course, my lady. How dare you? I dare more than you dare. Could have asked her to throw me out. Why didn't you? It would only make things worse. It'll be a lot worse when you're sprawled all over the centre pages of the news of the world. You're revolting. <laughs> Can't you see that none of that stuff works with me? What stuff? la di da gracious great lady. You think you're so marvellous, don't you? Your lot's finished. You're going down and we're coming up. The working classes may be coming up, but I'd be very surprised if you are. Now, please, get out. Can I have the money? No, you'd only come back for more. Suppose I gave you my word? If I wasn't so disgusted, that would actually make me laugh. I was just on my way up there. This is Miss Bevan, whom I was telling you about. How did you get in here? How do you think? I lied. Now you've got one more chance, and that'll be your last. You must be a glutton for punishment. Now, Anna, can you make sure she leaves? Certainly, my lady. decided what to do if that Miss Bevan returns? Not yet. If I pay her, I have a blood-sucking vampire on my back for the rest of my life. If I refuse, I'm ruined. What would you do? Don't be blackmailed, my lady. I know it's easy to say, but don't. I think I agree. If I'm strong enough, either way, my life's up the spout. And though I hate the idea of scandal, somehow the shadow of blackmail is worse. The cheek of her. It was all I could do not to give her a slap. Mm. Will there be anything else? No. Thank you. We may have our problems, the both of us. But we'll get through them. Been watching out for you. Why? What is it? A young woman of most unappealing aspect has been asking for you. Was her name Bevan? I knew she was trouble. She may cause trouble for me, but only because I've been foolish. Oh, we can all be foolish, my lady. You know, Carson, someday there'll be something I've done that even you will condemn me for. <laughs> I doubt that very much. Did she say if she'll be back? She never left. I tried to get her to go, but... Where is she now? In the library with his lordship. Papa, I don't know what this person has told you. Only the truth. But I hope you're not giving her any money. Not on my account. 
Take it and go. And remember, one word. Aren't you the lucky one? Then I suppose you always are. What did she say? Enough. I find I'm most disappointed in Tony Gillingham. Don't be. He wanted us to get married. Our weakened sin was just part of his plan to persuade me. Then why did you say no? Because when it came to it, he wasn't right. At least not for me. And you didn't think of George? Of course I did. I thought of all of you. I just needed to be sure. I suppose you were a widow after all and not a Deb in her first season. But it's still not the way your parents would have behaved. Oh, I don't know. If you believe what they write about the Edwardians these days. What were you planning to do with Miss Bevan? I wasn't going to be blackmailed, I know that. So I suppose I'd have let her publish and be damned. Rather tough on Tony and Mabel. Anyway, I'll telephone the bank in the morning and return your thousand pounds. I gave her 50 pounds and here's her signed confession to blackmail. How did you manage that? I told her that she could either have 50 pounds on condition of signing or leave with nothing and be reported to the police. But how do you know she won't be back? I said if anything were published or if we ever see her face again, I'd use it and she'd be prosecuted. I'm impressed. My darling papa transformed into Machiavelli at a touch. Will wonders never cease? Is that a compliment? You're still out of pocket 50 quid. I must repay it. No need. It was money well spent. Why? To learn that my eldest child is a child no more and quite tough enough to run this estate. Indeed, she could clearly run the kingdom should she be called upon to do so. Well, I hope you mean that. I do. And I'm more interested than ever to see who, in the future, does come up to your exacting standards. Maybe no one. I'd rather be alone than with the wrong man. Who is that young woman I saw leaving? Someone after money, usual thing. Did you give her any? Some. It was quite a good cause. You see Edith telephoned? Yes, she'll be home for dinner. I wonder if she wants to come to Mallerton tomorrow. Maybe we should all go. The fall of the House of Usher. We mustn't crow. We may be next.